Hi, you're 11. This is Mr. Lim here again, and this is our second video on energy changes, thermochemical equations, and energy profile diagrams. Let's get into it. Okay, so we're going to be learning about thermochemical equations and energy profile diagrams. Duh. All right, so thermochemical equations. So the amount of energy this time, okay, so we were just talking about in general, like energy is transferred last video, but now this is the amount of energy that is transferred. Um, can be shown in a chemical equation, can be shown in two different ways, using delta H. So, first way, the chemical equation will be written as per normal, and then on the right, at the end of the equation, it will show a semicolon, and then a delta H, and then a value uh, kilojoules per mole. All right, so it's saying effectively, this is the amount of energy uh, in kilojoules per mole that this reaction will occur, or that this reaction will produce or consume. All right, a positive value indicates an endothermic reaction, which means that uh, the energy from the surroundings goes into the system, meaning that the amount of chemical potential energy that this uh, reactor, the system will have at the end of the reaction is higher, meaning that the surroundings will give up energy, i.e. they'll get colder. All right, so that's a positive value, that's endothermic reaction. And a negative value will be an exothermic reaction. All right. So the delta H is calculated by subtracting the enthalpy of the reactants from the enthalpy of the products. Okay. But uh, in in reality, it's actually calculated by the effect that it has on the surroundings. All right. So some of you who have done physics already, uh, you'll be learning, or you'll have learned about the. Um, the what's it, the uh, specific heat capacity of water and how much energy it takes to change the temperature of water. So what happens is that they do these certain chemical reactions in bomb calorimeters, which are um, similar, I, similar pieces of equipment to what you used in physics. But effectively, they do the chemical reaction within this container. It heats up or consumes the energy from the water. And therefore, they measure the temperature change in the water and work out how much energy was consumed or uh, released in the chemical reaction, All right? But that's just how they work it out. And the value presented uh, that they give you is the energy released or produced, or sorry, or consumed using coefficient numbers of moles of each reactant. Okay, and we'll get to deal with that in a moment, All right? Alternatively, they can do uh, the 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 amount of energy transferred by writing it within the equation, all right? So again, the chemical equation will be written as per normal, and then the value of the delta H will be written as a reactant or a product. If the energy value is written as a reactant, it's an endothermic, so the heat is as a reactant, because effectively you need to put heat in for this reaction to occur, i.e. the heat from the surroundings goes into the system, therefore it's an endothermic reaction or if the energy value is written as a product, it's an exothermic reaction. Again, the value is based on the coefficient numbers of moles, right? And then when written within the equation, the value is always positive. Okay, so the location of the heat determines whether it's exothermic or endothermic, not whether, ever, not whether it's positive or negative. And so it's really uh, common for students to get it mixed up to seeing a positive value and immediately thinking it's endothermic when that's not necessarily true. So let's have a look at some examples. Okay, so this first example here, the delta H is written to the side. Okay, so this is the first method, right? And so therefore we look at the negative value, all right? And the fact that it's a negative value means that we have an exothermic reaction here, okay? The next one here is we are looking at a heat as a product. And if it's heat as a product, we are again looking at an exothermic reaction. Okay? If we look at heat as a reactant, and you see that it's a positive heat as a reactant, this is an endothermic reaction because simply it is the heat is a product. And it can be like, you know, I'm writing heat here, but you can be a value like 56 kilojoules or something, right? But you can also just show heat as well, right? And this one, last one here with the delta H on the side, because it's a positive value, it is an endothermic reaction, okay? So obviously these um, 
chemical formulas here are all just made up, right? But the idea is that the amount of energy could also be uh, is relevant. Uh, is relevant for the coefficient number of moles of stuff okay so if this was say a coefficient of two to one right you would need two moles of x to y and one mole of z to get the 56 kilojoules of energy consumed by this reaction because it's an endothermic reaction okay so that's what it looks like now we go to energy profile diagrams. Okay, so we can show it into a equation, but we can also show it in a diagram. Okay, so the energy change, the amount of energy change shown in the diagram. Diagrammatical representation is called an energy profile diagram. Okay, so there's a number of elements to an energy profile diagram. First of all, the axes. So on the y-axis, the progress of reaction. Okay, so what does that mean? So it's uh, how the reaction is progressing. And we don't use the idea of time because the reaction occurs almost instantaneously with no time spent in the transition state. And so therefore, these diagrams here, which show, you know, the reactants changing over time to products, okay, this re in reality occurs instantaneously. So you would see something like this if you were to really draw it out properly. But, you know, because we like to have things nice and clear in the diagrams we just kind of spread it out and therefore we write reaction progress here to make sure that people know that this is an instantaneous program process okay right and then finally the x-axis right is enthalpy right so enthalpy again being chemical potential energy can have no absolute values because it is impossible to determine the absolute amount of enthalpy a substance has right so effectively it's saying that the x-axis can't is or is not supposed to have a scale of any sort right we can only measure changes in enthalpy as a substances undergo chemical reaction so effectively we can see the difference between the enthalpy values but not the absolute value of enthalpies right what does that mean all right, so these ones here, again, potential energy over here um, in terms of, uh, you know, you can also call it enthalpy as well. But when we're talking about not having no absolute values, this value here might be 56 kilojoules, right? But this value here can't be like 100 kilojoules and this one here be 44 kilojoules because we don't know what those absolute values are going to be. We can only tell the change in enthalpy due to the change in some energies uh, of the surroundings, i.e. the temperature of the surroundings. Okay. Right. So that's that one there. Okay. So let's have a look. The next bit. All right. Uh, actually, I we haven't gone through whether this one is exothermic or endothermic, so let's have a look at this. Okay, so let's have a think. In the one on the left, the reactants start here and the products start end up there. Okay, so that means there has been an increase in chemical potential energy of the chemicals of the system. So therefore, there's been energy in. Therefore, this is an endothermic reaction, All right? So there's been energy in as the reactants have turned to products, right? And that energy has been turned into chemical potential energy, and so therefore, it has gone up in uh, energy, and therefore, it's endothermic. That makes this one exothermic. Why? Because there has been a decrease in chemical potential energy. Where has that gone? That's gone, uh, gone to surroundings as heat or other forms of energy. All right, that's an exothermic because the reactants start out. Oops, that's not what I wanted. The reactants start out high and the products start out low or end up low. All right. Okay, and they have uh, effectively the same delta H in these two equations. All right. Ah, that's not what I wanted. Okay, where are we going? Here we go, next. Again, we just show the reactants, 
okay, you've got to label reactants, okay, and they're a flat line because they don't change their enthalpy until the reaction starts, and we've also got products, okay, so you really make sure that you have to label reactants, oops, label reactants and label products, okay, you've got to label those things, otherwise you don't get the marks, okay. Um, there's also the transition state, okay, the transition state, which is the highest point of the system where all bonds have been broken and no bonds have been formed. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So here is the transition state at this point up here, the transition state, okay? And if you think about it, this is the amount of energy that's been required to break bonds. And this is the amount of energy required or released when bonds form. And so you can see that the release is less than the required here, which means that there's an overall requirement of energy to go into the system. And so therefore this is an endothermic reaction here. However, in the other example, I needed this much for bond breaking and this is required, and I've used, I've produced this much energy during bond formation, and this is released. And so therefore, there's an overall released in that one there. Okay, uh, next, what else? The activation energy, okay, so the activation energy is the amount of energy required to bring reactions to transition state. So we did that already. Effectively, it's this value here. Oops. It's this value here. Okay. That value is there on the other one. Okay. That's the amount of energy required to bring reactants, the reactants, up to transition state. Up to transition state. Okay. So that's the activation energy. And you can label that as EA. Okay. All right. And then finally, the delta H uh, is shown as a change of enthalpy for the reactants and products. Okay, so this is the delta H. Oops, ah, always do that. That's the delta H there, that's the delta H there. Okay, All right. Um, so those are the bits and pieces for your energy profile diagram. The last couple of things. All right, when drawing an energy profile diagram, make sure you add all the appropriate elements. And whilst there are no values on the x-axis, things still have to be drawn to scale on them, okay? What does it mean to have something to be drawn to scale when there is no scale, All right? Um, the two values that you have are activation energy and delta H, and these two have to be drawn to scale to each other, but not matching anything on the x-axis. So what does that mean? Okay, so here's a typical reaction, x plus y goes to z. You've got the delta H is negative 40 and the EA is 100. Okay, so looking at this here, we've got the delta uh, H here as negative 40, which means that this is an exothermic reaction. Okay, so therefore, I need to think that this is going to uh, have a higher reactance than products. And I know that the EA is 100. Okay, so that's the activation energy to get me to my transition state. So the delta H and the EA have to be relative to each other, right? So if I start off here with my reactants, and you just label it with R, this here is going to be my products down over here. And so therefore this here, from here to Here is my delta H, and I know that that's 40 kilojoules, right? But then I also know that my EA has to be 100, so it has to be like one and a two, like you know, two and a half times that one there. So if I go two and a half times, I'm just going to roughly estimate it as like one and a one time there, two times there, and a half time there. Right, so we should go all the way up to that point there. Right, that reaches my transition state, and then all the way back down to P. Okay, and I should have 
after all, and the first one a bit smaller, but that doesn't matter, right? So the activation energy can be written like this, right? And so this is, oops, oops, EA, the activation energy, right? Of 100 kilojoules. So they are, this one's not even on the scale anymore there, but in terms of making sure you have everything, you gotta put these axis labels in. So this will be enthalpy, or you can just write H, and the unit, kilojoules per mole, right? And this is progress of reaction. But the point is that this here and this here have to be to scale to each other, right? If you have a grid, then you should draw it exactly to scale. And if you have a ruler, you should draw it roughly to scale. But if you don't have either of those things, you just kind of have to eyeball it. But of course, you will have a ruler because you need to have a ruler when um, doing exams and stuff. All right. So that's the idea that these two here have to be um, to scale to each other. All right. The last thing that we need to talk about this is lines showing the value of delta H and activation energy should be very accurate. What marks must be taken off uh, if the lines do not reach their intended locations? Okay, so what does that mean? All right, so that means that this point here and this point here have to exactly reach their uh, target points. That there has to be on the line and that one there. That's why I drew all those dots here, right, to make sure that that P was roughly right, all right? But what I'm saying is that if I was to say that, okay, label this diagram with EA, okay, I can do that. If I just write EA is from here to here, right, you're not going to get that mark because you need to make sure that the EA gets all the way to the transition state, right? And that even here, not even that great. If it was like a little bit shorter, like not good enough. You need to get like, there's a perfectly good line there. You draw it right to that line, okay? And that would be the EA. Well, actually, that's not the EA, right? What am I talking about? This is the EA, where I would draw a line out from there and be like, there, that's the EA, okay? So, you gotta make sure that these lines line up perfectly, right? And you can write the delta H anywhere. So like that delta H could even be all the way over here, right? So you just go right all the way to that line at the bottom, all the way like to that line at the top. And this could be, whoops, not EA, delta H, okay? So that's, these energy profile diagrams and these uh what's my jiggies and these thermochemical equations all right now after this we're going to be going through calculations to them as well all right adios